the introduction here yeah, in the 15th chapter. In the 15th chapter, um, uh, in my book, your voice is really low. Oh, okay. Now? Is yeah, it it's a bit better. Thank you. In the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, the real picture of the material world is given. It is said there, Udva Moolam Adam Shakam Mashvatam Prahur Abhyayam Chandanti Yasya Parnani Yasam Veda Saveda Here the material world is described as a tree whose roots are upward and branches are below. We have experience of a tree whose roots are upward. If one stands on the bank of a river or any reservoir of water, he can see that the trees reflected in the water are upside down. The branches go downward and the roots upward. Similarly, this material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. The material world is but a shadow of reality. In the shadow, there is no reality or substantiality. But from the shadow, we can understand that there are substance and reality. In the desert, there is no water, but mirage suggests that there is such a thing as water. In the material world, there is no water, there is no happiness, but the real water of actual happiness is there in the spiritual world. The Lord suggests that we attain the spiritual world in the following manner. Nirmana moha jitatanga dosha adhyatma nitya vinavyatpate kama the Padam Avyam or Eternal Kingdom can be reached by one who is Man Moha. What does that this mean? Where we are after designation. Someone wants to become Sir, someone wants to become Lord. Some, someone wants to become the president or a rich man or a king or something else. As long as we are attached to these designations, we are attached to the body because designations belong to the body. But we are not these bodies and realizing this is the first stage of spiritual realization. We are associated with the three modes of material nature, but we must become detached through the devotional service of the Lord. If we are not attached to devotional service or to the Lord, then we cannot become detached from the modes of material nature. Designation and attachments are due to our lust and desire, our wanting to lord it over the oh, material what? nature. As long as we do not give up the, this propensity of lording it over material nature, there is no possibility of returning to the kingdom of the Supreme, the Sanatan Dharma. That eternal kingdom, which is never destroyed, can be approached by one who is not bewildered by the attractions of false material enjoyment, who is situa situated in the service of the Supreme Lord. One so situated can easily approach that Supreme abode. Let's stop here for a moment and discuss what we read till now. So what have we read till now? In the material world is described as a tree which is upside down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And whatever it's... we see, that is not actual things. The things are, the real things are in the spiritual world and we are seeing the shadow of that. The, like, we see the shadow of the tree, if the example is given, the banyan tree example. So then does it mean that, oh, right now, what right now, what we are seeing, does it mean, how do we see that then? I mean, uh, the world is a reflection and we are seeing the shadow. You're saying we are seeing the shadow. So how do we take that then? How do we how do we understand that point? Mm -hmm. 
whatever we see, it's like in the water, we see the reflection of a tree and we see upside down. Actually, yeah. the tree roots are, yeah, the branches are on top, but in the water reflection, we see that branches are down. So actual happiness is in the spiritual world and whatever we see in this material world is not the real happiness. It's temporary. So we think that this is the permanent things and whatever we are getting the happiness or whatever. So that is not for real. It's it's just a shadow. So you, one can imagine how much uh, happiness or, or the things are in real in the spiritual world. As the shadow of this is so people are taking it like so happy happiness and all these things so imagine how much uh, there it is in the real world yeah thank you and what else did we do how do we go to the spiritual world by leaving our um, ownership whatever we think that this is mine, this is my position and all. We have to detach everything. Detach from everything. And, uh, By a devotional service to the Lord. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> By devotional service, we will get detached from these designations. We can give up yeah. the designations. And what are the designations? What does it mean, designation? Designation is that I am this, I am that, and people think that this is my uh, position. Yeah. They think so much attached of that designation, and they don't want to leave that. Uh, like politicians, they don't want to leave their uh, position. So but it's not so only the politician. It's not no, a, the I'm, designation. It's not for, for yeah. each and every one of us. You know, I'll be thinking yeah. I'm a man or a woman, I'm a, I'm a husband or a wife or I'm yeah. this or I'm that. So for each and every and one of us, the in our life. Yeah. Hmm? I'm sorry? The roles that we are playing in our life, yeah. That's As right. a mother yeah. or... Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, and then we, we identify ourselves without remembering that we are the soul, actually. And so why are we getting this designation and attachment? What is the cause? Because of material nature, three modes of nature. Because it's our lust and our desire. Yes. Because of our lust and our desire and we want to control material nature. We want to enjoy material nature. So because of that. Then, as you rightly said, just by devotional service, we can be able to give the, all this up. Okay, so then let's continue reading. Yeah, we'll continue You'll reading. Yeah. Yeah, can you continue? Elsewhere in the Gita, it is stated. Avyakto Akshara Iti Yukta Sam Ahu Parmam Gatim Yam Prapya Na Nivartantu Sad Dhamma Parmam Mama. Riya, yeah. can you continue, please? You want me to read? Oh, Yogita, we can't hear. Yogita is asking. Me too, you are able to read? Yeah, yeah, I can read, I can read, but Yogita... Um... I'm asking you to read. Okay, I'll read, okay. Okay, sorry, I couldn't understand. I'm going to start reading. Elsewhere in the Gita, it is stated, Avyaktu Charata Uktas, Tam Oha Paramam Gatim, 
ಯಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರಪ್ಯನ ನಿರ್ವಂತೆ ತ ಧರ್ಮ ಪರ್ಮ ಮಮ ಅವ್ಯಕ್ತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಅಸ್ ಆ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಇಂಪ್ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಸೀ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ರಿಸೀವ್ ಮಚ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಶನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ and we can believe it or not believe it all of the important planets are described in vedic literature especially shrimad bhagavatam and the spiritual world which is beyond this material sky is described as avya av avyakta unmanifested one should desire and hanker after that supreme kingdom for when one attains the kingdom he does not have to return to this material world next one may raise the question of how one goes about approaching that abode of the supreme lord information of this is given in the 8th chapter it is said there ant kale cha maam eva smaran muktva kale varam ya prayati samad bhavam yadi naste atra samshaya anyone who, who quits his body at the end of life remembering me attains immediately to my nature and there is no doubt of this one who thinks of krishna at the time of his death goes to krishna one must remember the form of krishna if he quits his body thinking of this form he surely approaches the spiritual kingdom madbhavam refers to the supreme nature of the supreme being the supreme being is satchit anand vigraha that is that is his form is eternal full of knowledge and bliss our present body is not satchit ananda it is a sat not sat it is not eternal it is perishable it is not chit full of knowledge but it is full of ignorance we have no knowledge of the spiritual kingdom nor do we even have perfect knowledge of this material world where there are so many things unknown to us the body is also nirananda instead of being full of bliss it is full of misery all the misery we experience in the material world arise from the body but one who leaves this body thinking of lord krishna the supreme personality of god had at once attains a satchit anand body so that that's the difference between krishna's form and our form right now isn't it what is krishna's form his form is satchit anand means satchit anand yeah what does satchit anand mean eternal knowledge full of knowledge and bliss that's right and what do what does our body how what's how can we describe our body it's perishable it's going to finish nirananda yes yes misery yes yeah that's right it's called asat asat because yeah it's called asat not sat sat so because we are not this bodies we are inside the body and this body is going to finish at one point of time so and so one who thinks of krishna while leaving the body at once gets satchidananda the body okay we continue reading the process of quitting this body and getting another body in the material world is also organized a man dies after it has been decided what form of body he will give he will have in the next life higher authority not the living entity himself make the decision according to our activity then this life we either rise or sink this life is a preparation for the next life if we can prepare therefore in this life to get promotion to the kingdom of god then sure, surely after quitting this material body we will attain a spiritual body just like the lords as explained mm-hmm. before there are different kinds of transcendentalist uh, the brahma vadi the parmatma vadi and the devotee and as mentioned in the brahma jyoti spiritual sky there are innumerable spiritual planets the number of these planets is far far greater than all of the planets in the material world this material world has been approximated as one as only one quarter of the creation ekam ekam sehna teto jagat 
material segment there are billions and billions of universes with trillions of planets and suns, stars and moons. But this whole material creation is only a fragment of the total creation. Most of the creation in the spiritual sky, in the spiritual sky, one who desires to merge into the existence of the Supreme Brahman is at once transferred to the Brahma Jyoti of the Supreme Lord and thus attain the spiritual sky. The devotee who wants to enjoy the association of the Lord enters in the Vaikuntha planets, which are innumerable, and the Supreme Lord and the Supreme Lord by his plenary ex plenary expansions at Narayana with four hands and with different names like Radhyumna, Aniruddh, and Govinda associate with him there. Therefore, at the end of life and transcendent bliss, think either of the Brahma Jyoti, the Paramatma, or Supreme Personality of God, Shri Krishna. In all cases, they enter into the spiritual sky, but only the devotee or who is in planets of or the Goloka Vrindana planet the Lord further, the Lord further add that that of this there is no doubt. This must be believed firmly. We should not reject that which does not tally with our imagination. Our attitude should be of that of Arjuna. I believe everything that was said. Therefore, when the Lord says that at the time of death, whoever thinks of him as Brahman or Paramatma or as the personality of Godhead certainly enters into the spiritual sky. There is no doubt about it. There is no question of disbelieving it. The Bhagavad Gita also ex the Bhagavad Gita also explains that the general principle that makes it possible to enter the spiritual kingdom simply by thinking of the Supreme at the time of death. Yama Yamavapi smaran bhavam tajati ante kalavaram tam tam ivaiti kaunteya sad tad bhavya bhavi bhavita. Shall I continue? Whatever statement be. Continue reading, no, bhavi or? I'm sorry. I'll continue reading. Yes, please. Yeah. Whatever the state of being one remembers when he quits his present body, in his next life he will attain to that state without fail. Now, first we must understand that material nature is a display of one of the energies of Supreme Lord. In the Vishnu Purana, the total energy energies of the Supreme Lord are delineated. Vishnu Sakte Paraprakta. Yeah. All right. yeah. We'll just put a point here, what Srila Prabhupada is saying, that we need to trust in Krishna's words, isn't it? Krishna is saying, without fail, whatever you think of at the time of leaving the body, without fail, the next body you will get accordingly. That's it. And so Prabhupada is saying, we should have belief in this. We should not have doubt in this. If somebody is thinking of the Brahman, Brahma Jyoti, he will enter into the Brahma Jyoti. And the devotee is going to think of Krishna, then he will go to Golok Vrindavan. So we are we are always believing so many things. You know, we 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 trust. We get a guarantee. We buy a, a gadget. We get a guarantee, a warranty. We trust these people. Similarly, here Krishna is saying, "You think of me, you will come to me." So we need to have faith in Krishna's words. So let's continue reading. Yeah. Vishnu Sakte Para Prakta Shetra Janakya Tatha Para Avidya Karma Samjananya Tritva Sakti Ristriyate. The Supreme Lord has diverse and innumerable energies which are beyond our conception. However, great learned sages. All liberated souls have studied these energies and, and have analyzed them into three parts. All of the energies are of Vishnu Shakti. There is to say that there are different potencies of Lord Vishnu. The first energy is Para, transcendental, living entity, living to belong to the superior energy, as has already been explained. The energy, ideal energies, are in a more difference. At the time of death, either we can remain or remain in the inferior energy of this material world or we can transfer to the energy of the spiritual world. So the Bhagavad Gita says, Yama Yama Vapi Smaran 
ಭವಂ ತಜ್ವತ್ ಅಂತೆ ಕಲೆವರಂ ತಮ್ಮ ತಮ್ಮ ಇವಾಯಿತಿ ಕೊಂತೆಯ ಸದಾ ತದ್ ಭವ ಭವಿತ ವರ್ ಎವರ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಈ ಕ್ವಿಟ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಅಟೈನ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಫೇಲ್ ಇನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಇದರ್ of spiritual oh, energy let's try to hear let's try to sorry let's try to see how many types of energies are there hmm i'm sorry uh, material energy hmm superior energy yeah no sorry first energy is para para yeah so there um three energies huh? Yeah, three. One is the superior mm-hmm. spiritual energy. And then, the as you said, the material energy. And one is the living entities, we, the jivas. Mm-hmm. So there are three. So that's the inferior as... energy. I'm sorry? Inferior. Inferior, yeah, inferior. that's the material energy. Yeah. so we have a choice we can either be in the superior energy or we can be in the inferior energy that's why we are called marginal the living entities so here we heard there is one is para energy the transcendental and one is the inferior energy and we the living entities are also an uh, energy although we belong to the superior energy sometimes we are choosing to be in the inferior energy so there are total three energies of the lord i mean of course there are many but they are broadly divided into this three superior inferior and marginal we marginal are also superior but now we have gotten into the material world sorry is that all right yeah hmm. whatever stage state of one one being of um state of one of being one remember the omi quits as present body in the next cycle attend to this that state without fail in life we are accustomed to accustomed to material or other spiritual energy now how can we transfer our thoughts from the material energy to the spiritual energy there are so many literature which fill our thoughts with material energy newspapers magazines novels etc our thinking which is now absorbed in these literatures must be transferred to the vedic literatures the great sages therefore have written so many vedic literatures such as the puranas the puranas are not imaginative they are historical records in the chaitanya Char- in the chaitanya charitamrita there is fol- there is a following verse maya mukta jivara nai ನಾಹಿ ಸ್ವತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜನನ್ಯ ಜಿವೇರೆ ಕೃಪೆಯ ಕಾಯಿಲ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವೇದ ಪುರಾಣ ದ ಫಗೆಟ್ ಫುಲ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎಂಟಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಡಿಷನ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫೊಗೋಟನ್ ದಿಯರ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಶಿಪ್ ವಿತ್ ದರ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಎಂಗ್ರೋಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ ದಿಯರ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಪಾವರ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುಯಲ್ ಸ್ಕಾಯ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ್ವಾ ಪಾಯನ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈದಿಕ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿ ಡಿವೈಡೆಡ್ ದ ವೇದ ಇನ್ ಟು ಫೋರ್ then he explained them in the puranas and for less capable people he wrote the mahabharata in the mahabharata there is given the bhagavad gita then all vedic literature is summarized in the vedanta sutra and for future guidance he gave a natural comment commentation on the vedanta sutra called shrimad bhagavatam we must always engage our minds in reading the vedic literature just just as materialists engage their mind in reading newspapers magazines and so many material, materialistic literature we must transfer our reading to these literature which are given to us by vyasa deva in that way it will be possible for us to remember the supreme lord at the time of death that is the only way suggested by the lord and he guarantees the result there is no doubt so yeah bro by the saying that the way we can because our consciousness is so material all the time we are thinking of material things when we hear from bhagavatam 
Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, that can help us to think of Krishna. Engage our mind in reading these Vedic literatures. And then again, there is no that that is the only way to remember the Supreme Lord at the time of death. And he guarantees the result. There is no doubt. So we can see how many times Srila Prabhupada is stressing the point that Krishna is guaranteeing if we can just think of Krishna at the time of death, then we will go back to the spiritual world. There is no doubt about that. Yeah, can I read? Tasmat Sarveshu Kaleshu Mam Ansmarane Yadhyacha May Arbita Mano Buddhir Mame Heshi Asamshaya. Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna and at the same time continue your prescribed duty of fighting. With your activity dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. He does not advise Arjuna simply to remember him and give him occupation. No. The Lord never suggests anything impractical. In this material world, in order to maintain the body, one has to work. Human society is divided, according to work, into four divisions of social order. Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra. The Brahmana class or intelligent class is working in one way. The Kshatriya or administrative class is working in another way. And the mercantile class and the laborers are all tending in another way tending to their specific duty. In the human society, whether one is laborer, merchant, administrator, or farmer, or even if he be one belongs to the highest class and is a literary man, a scientist, or a theolo theologian, he has to work in order to maintain his existence. The Lord therefore tells Arjuna that he need not be in his occupation. But while he is engaged in the occupation, he should remember Krishna. Mam ad anusmaranam. If he doesn't face, uh, practice Krishna, uh, remembering Krishna while he is struggling for existence, then it will not be possible for him to remember Krishna at the time of death. Lord Chaitanya also advised this. He says, Kirtanya Sada Hari. One should practice chanting the names of the Lord always. The name, names of the Lord and the Lord are non different. So, Lord Krishna instructions to Arjuna. To remember me and Lord Chaitanya's injunction to always chant the name of Lord Krishna are the same instructions. There is no difference because Krishna and Krishna's name are non-different. In the absolute status, there is no difference between reference and referent. Therefore, we have to practice remembering the Lord always 24 hours a day by chanting by chanting his names and molding our life's activity in such a way that we can remember him always. So here, Shla Prabhupada is pointing out what is Krishna saying? Give up everything? Or how do we remember him? No, he's saying always do your duty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do your duty and at the same time remember. And your him. mind, intelligence fixed on me. Yeah. And Prabhupada points this out that if we don't remember practice, if we don't practice remembering Krishna while struggling for existence, then it will not be possible to remember Krishna at the time of death. Yeah. So, and Lord Chaitanya is also saying the same thing wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you continue. But you just chant the names of Krishna and you give others this Krishna. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, you tell them about Krishna. And this is how we can always remember Krishna. Okay. Let's continue reading. I'll read. How is this possible? The Acharyas gave the following give the following example. If a married woman is attached to another man 
or if a man has an attachment for a woman other than his wife then the attachment is to be considered very strong one with such an attachment is always thinking of the loved one the wife who is thinking of her lover is always thinking of meeting him even while she is carrying out her household chores in fact she carries out her household work even more carefully so her husband will not suspect her attachment similarly we should always remember the supreme lover shri krishna and at the same time perform our material very nicely a strong sense of love is required here and we have a strong sense of love for the supreme lord then we can discharge our duty and at the same time remember him but we have to develop that sense of love Ar arjuna for instance was always thinking of krishna he was a constant companion of krishna and at the same time he was avoiding krishna did not advise to give up fighting and go to the forest to meditate when lord krishna de delineates the yoga system to arjuna arjuna says the practice of the system is not possible for him arjun vacha jo yo yam yoga tavya prokta samyena madhusudana etasyam ुक्ता of all the yogis the one with great faith who always abides in me thinks of me within himself and renders transcendental loving service to me is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all that is my opinion so one who thinks of the supreme lord always the greatest yogi the supermost jnan janani and the greatest devotee at the same time the lord further tells arjuna that as a kshatriya he cannot give up his fighting but if arjuna fights remembering krishna then he'll be able to remember krishna at the time of death but one must be completely surrendered in the transcendental loving service of the lord so here what who is the best yogi krishna is saying Who always thinks of Krishna twenty four seven? Yeah, always thinks of Krishna twenty four seven. That's the highest yogi. And um, again, Shri Prabhu is pointing out that um, that Arjuna cannot give up his duty, but if Arjuna fights remembering Krishna, then he will be able to remember Krishna at the time of death. So he points the same same thing again, you know, and he says we have to develop develop our love for Krishna here, um, but we have to develop that sense of love. So it's there, yes, of course it's there in our heart, but we have to develop that love. You know, Arjuna already has love for Krishna, and so he's always thinking of Krishna. But what about us? What about us? you know we have we have to develop that sense of love and how can we develop that by meditating meditate krishna does not ask him to meditate arjuna was krishna uh, Remind, uh, was gave this. It should be completely project. surrendered by giving up. But then, how can we? How can we become to the point of surrender, though? It begins by hearing, hearing about Krishna, hearing from Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, hmm. and chant, remembering. Because how we can develop that sense of love is by devotional service. devotional service begins by hearing chanting goes on, goes on no, nava anga bhakti we say there are nine processes hearing chanting remembering worshiping these are the most important for us the first is hearing 
chanting. If we hear properly, we'll be able to chant. If we have heard and chanted properly, we will be able to remember. And that's how we can develop this sense of love. Even though it's there in our hearts, it's now because we have forgotten it. So that's the reason that that is on our part. That's our duty. What we have to do is to revive that love. Yeah. So there's something that's required on our part to do. Let's continue to read. We work not with our body, actually, but with our mind and intelligence. So if the intelligence and the mind are always engaged in the thought of the Supreme Lord, then naturally the senses are also engaged in his service. Superficially, at least, the activities of the senses remain the same, but the consciousness is changed. The Bhagavad Gita teaches one how to absorb the mind and intelligence in the thought of the Lord. Such absorption will enable one to transfer himself to the kingdom of the Lord. If the mind is engaged in Krishna's service, then the senses are automatically engaged in his service. This is the art and this is also the secret of Bhagavad Gita. Total absorption in the thought of Sri Krishna. Modern man has struggled very hard to reach the moon, but he has not tried very hard to elevate himself spiritually. If one has filled the years of life, 50, sorry, if one has 50 years of life ahead of him, he should engage that brief time in cultivating this practice of remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The practice, this practice is a devotional process. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Pata Sevanam Pada Sevanam Arkanam Vadnanam Dasham Savam Atma Nivedanam Srimad Bhagavatam these nine processes, of which the easiest is Shravanam, hearing the Bhagavad Gita from the realized person, will turn one into the thought of the Supreme Being. This will lead to remembering the Supreme Lord and will enable one, upon leaving the body, to attain a spiritual body which is fit for association with the Supreme Lord. The Lord further says, Abhyasa Yoga Yuktena, Setasa Nanya Gamina, Paramam Purusam Divyam Yati Parthu Parathanusi Natyanam. He who meditates on me as a supreme personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, undeviated from the path, O oh, he, he, oh, Arjuna, is sure to reach me. Continue. This is not a very difficult process. However, one must learn it from an experienced person. Tach tad vijnan ratham sa gurum ivabhya gachit. One must approach a person who is already in the practice. The mind is always flying to this and that. But one must practice concentrating the mind always on the form of Supreme Lord. Sri Krishna on the sound of his name. The mind is naturally restless going hither and thither, but it can rest in the sound vibration of Krishna. One must meditate on Paramam Purusham, the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the spiritual kingdom, the spiritual sky and thus attain him. The ways and means for ultimate realization, ultimate attainment are stated in Bhagavad Gita and the doors of this knowledge are open for everyone. No one is barred out. All classes of men can approach Lord Krishna by thinking of him. For hearing and thinking of him are possible for everyone. So here Prabhupada points out that one must meditate on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is, but how, how, how we will come to the point of always thinking of Krishna? By hearing and chanting the glories of Krishna? Yes, that's Varanam. right. Yes. By hearing and chanting. That's right. Thank you. And chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Then we will be able to come to this point of the mind being absorbed in Krishna. Thank you. Let's continue. The Lord Manhi Pasa Vyatashya Ya Api Shuya Papa Yonya Triyo Vashya Tatha Shudrashti Api Yanti Parma Gatim. 
किं पुनर्ब्रमण पुण्य भक्त राजरसी तथ अनिम असुख्यम लोकम इम प्राप्य भजस्व माम Thus the Lord says that even a merchant, a fallen woman, or a laborer, or an even human being in the lowest status of life can attain the supreme. But he does not need highly developed intelligence. The point is that anyone who accepts the principle of Bhakti Yoga and accepts the supreme Lord and as the summum bonum of life, as the highest target, the ultimate goal, can approach the Lord in the spiritual path. If one adopts the principles and new and initiated in Bhagavad Gita, he can make his life perfect and make a permanent solution to all the problems of life. This is the sum and substance of the entire Bhagavad Gita. In conclusion, Bhagavad Gita is a transcendental literature which one should read very carefully. Gita Shastram Idam Punyam Yah Parshit Prayatri Kumam. If one properly follows the instruction of Bhagavad Gita, one can be free from all the miseries and anxieties of life. Bhaya Shokati Vardhita. One will be free from all fears in this life, and one's next life will be spiritual. Gita Mahatma. There is also a further advantage. Gita Jhana Silasya Pranayama Prasya Cha Naiva Shanti Hi Papani Purva Janma Kratani Cha. If one reads Bhagavad Gita very sincerely and with all seriousness, then by the grace of Lord, the reactions of his past misdeeds will not act upon him. Gita Matme too. The Lord says very loudly in the last question of Bhagavad Gita, eighteen sixty-six. Mami kam aham tam sarva pape bhu mokshishyami ma shucha. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. Thus the Lord takes all responsibility for one who surrender unto him, and he indemnifies such a person against all reactions of sin. Mala nirmachanam purusam jalas nanam dine dine sakrit gita amratas nanam samsara mal nashanam. One may cleanse himself daily by taking a bath in water, but if one takes a bath, but even once in a sacred Ganges water of Bhagavad Gita, for him the dirt of material life is altogether vanity. Gita Mahatma Sri. Gita Sutta Gita Sugita Kartavya Kim Anya Shastra Vitraha Yaswayam Padma Nabhasya Mukha Padma Vena Ishtata. Because Bhagavad Gita is spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one need not read any other Vedic literature. One need only attentively and regularly hear and read Bhagavad Gita. Can you read? Uh, yeah. Can you continue? Yeah. Do you are able to read? Yes, yes. Uh, from where should I start? Yeah, in the present age. People are so absorbed. Yeah. In, yeah. yeah. in the present age, people are so absorbed in mundane activities that it is not possible for them to read all the Vedic literatures. But this is not necessary. This one book, Bhagavad Gita, will suffice because it is the essence of all Vedic liter literature and especially because it is spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As it is said, Bharat, Bharata Matra Sarvasvam Vishnu Vaktra Vinishratram Gita Gangotak Gangotakam Pitva Punar Janma Navidyate. One who drinks the water of the Ganges attains sal salvation. So, what to speak of one who drinks the nectar of Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavad Gita is the es essential nectar of the Mahabharata and it is spoken by Lord Krishna himself, the original Vishnu. Bhagavad Gita comes from the mouth of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Ganges is said to emanate from the lotus feet of the Lord, of course. There is no difference between the mouth and the feet of the Supreme Lord, but from an impartial study, we can appreciate that Bhagavad Gita is even more important than the water of the Ganges. Sarvo Upanishado Gava Dogda Gopala Nan Kadana Partho Vatsa Sudhir Bhukta Dogdam Gita Amrit Mahat. This Gita Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita, is the essence of all Upanishads. It's just like a cow and Lord Krishna 
who's famous as a cowherd boy, is milking this cow. Arjuna is just like a calf, and learned scholars and pure devotees are to drink of the nectarian, are to drink the nectarian milk of Bhagavad Gita. Ekam Satram Devaki Putra Gitam. Eko Devo Devaki Putra Iva. Eko Mantra Sasya Namami Yani. Karmapi Ekam Sasya Devas Devasya Seva. In the present day, the people are very much eager to have one scripture, one God, one religion, and one occupation. Therefore, Ekam Satram Devaki Putra Gitam. Let there be one scripture only. One common scripture for the whole world. Bhagavad Gita. Eko Devo Devaki Putra Eva. Let them be one God for the whole world. Shri Krishna. Eko Manitas. Eko Mantras Tasya Namami. And one hymn, one mantra, one prayer. The chanting of his name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Karmapi Ekam Tasya Devasya Seva. And let there be one work only, the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So here, so it's so, actually Prabhupada, how he's simplifying for us, no? because we get confused. Oh, there are so many Vedas. There are so many mantras. Oh, there are so many, so many things happening. What to do, what to do. He's just simplifying. One scripture, Bhagavad Gita, one common scripture. One God for the whole world, Krishna. One mantra, chant the Hare Krishna mantra. One service, serve the Supreme Lord. And then this way, get the perfection of life. Yeah. So that's why Bhagavad Gita can be repeatedly read, repeatedly. Okay, then let's read the disciplic succession. The disciplic succession. Evam parampara praptam imam raja sayo vidu. Bhagavad Gita 4.2. This Bhagavad Gita, it is received through this disciplic succession. First Krishna, second Brahma, third Narada, fourth Vyasa, fifth Madhva, sixth Padmanabha, seventh Narari, eighth Madhva, ninth Akshobhya, tenth Jayatritha, eleventh Jnana Sindhu, twelfth Dayanidhi, thirteenth Vidyanindhi. 14th Rajendra, 15th Jaya Dharma, 16th Pushotama, 17th Brahmanya Tirtha, 18th Vyapsya Tirtha, 19th Lakshmi Pati, 20th Mahavendra Puri, 21st Ishwara Puri Nityananda Dvaita, 22nd Lord Chaitanya, 23rd Rupa, Swarupa Sanatana, 24th Raghunatha Jiva, 25th Krishna Dasa, 26th Nashotama, 27th Vishna, Vishwanatha, 28th Baladeva Jagannatha, 29th Bhakti Venoda, 30th, 30th Gaura Kishora, 31st Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, 32th AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Thank you so much. So that brings us to the end of the introduction. Introduction. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada is kind enough. You know, he's giving us the whole entire disciplic succession to show us that how he is in the parampara and that how we are hearing this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita in the parampara. So it is as Krishna spoke it and as Arjuna understood it. So let's 